Hello everyone and welcome to Greg Tech New Horizons. You know, there's one thing that every single person needs, even inside this game, and it's definitely not the sound of a macerator. Or are these guys showing up at your front door? <laughs> Look who it is. Our old friend up there. Oh, he definitely sees me down here. No, what I'm talking about here is food. And in New Horizons, it's a very big problem because of spice of life. So today our goal is to address that. I don't know where that guy went either. Oh, there he is. For any of you unfamiliar with those guys up there, if you get close to them, they'll explode and generate a giant ball of cobblestone. And the cobblestone is filled with silverfish. And not just vanilla silverfish either. I'm not even going to take any chances here. <laughs> We're going to let them despawn. Aha, there we go. Plus one mining level. You know, that really didn't take as long as I was expecting it to. Yeah, so if you guys remember, we did manage to get our bricked blast furnace here in order to start producing steel. We want to try and keep this running as much as we possibly can because it's very, very slow. And in fact, I think we'll maybe even grab a second one today. However, now that we have the increased mining level on the pickaxe, I headed down to that lava pocket we found. As we need to gather some obsidian. And I thought while I was down there, I would gather a bit more than we need. Awesome, I think 48 ought to do it. Sounds like we have some issues with this macerator again, and that's exactly where the subsidian is heading. I did just sleep, so I think it's our solar boiler just not outputting enough. Yeah, that's something else I'd like to fix today, if possible. We'll go with the quick fix though, and just smack it with the soft mallet. So just as a reminder on where we're at in the quest book, we need to get our hands on some alumite to craft the tool forge. And actually, thank you to Metis, who pointed out that it's actually much more efficient to make alumite dust. So we're gonna macerate 12 obsidian and 24 aluminium gravel since the gravel will also turn into two crushed aluminium. Much better yield than if we just toss it in the smeltery. Since we're still waiting on macerating some materials, we do need two large plates, the tough tool rod, which we just cast out. I think it's just these three things in this version of Tinkers. The hammerhead is gonna be made from bronze. Come on, little steam macerator, you can do it. We need at least 20 of this dust, I think. Look at this, 40 seconds per. You know what, we can actually multitask. There's a few other things I'd like to pick up early in this episode. If I can find the hammer, I have no idea where I left that thing. Seriously, where is it? <laughs> oh, wait a second. I know. I know exactly where it is. Yeah, I see you up there, spider. I bet it's in the work table. Yep. I would like to make a butchery knife. I thought this was going to be a quest, but apparently not. I think this gives us increased yield on passive animal kills. Oh my goodness, there's so many of them. I think it also prevents explosions from these guys. I still don't know why they have to explode in GTNH, but they do. Yeah, it definitely seems like we're getting more leather than usual. I think it wouldn't be such a bad idea to pick up another backpack. Now that we've unlocked steel, we can get the general all-purpose backpack, which can hold basically anything we want. And we can also upgrade this in the future when we have stainless steel, and then I think again titanium. But first, the alumite should be ready to go. Wash the dust. Wow, 42 aluminium. That's crazy early game. We also need steel dust. Can we do this the manual way? Yes, we can. And now we can craft the first pieces of alumite. Can we smelt this or does it have to go through the smeltery? I guess we want it in the smeltery anyway, right? Since we're going to be casting it out into tools. So we need to melt down at least 16, plus an extra three for the tool rod. So yeah, hammerhead from bronze. This will give us a, a bit of a cheaper repair material since bronze is what we'll use to repair the hammer. Oh right, I almost forgot. We should make sure to get the quest. We only need one alumite ingot for the quest. Very important to follow the quest book here in GTNH. There we go. Next quest is for the tool forge. I guess we do need an extra two large plates for this. We are also going to be short two pieces of steel. We should have some in the blast furnace by now. Yeah, there's the second batch of alumite. And after processing the rest of the materials, we can grab the tool forge. And the request. I was a bit worried for a second. That took a while. And the hammer is absolutely the first upgrade we're going to make here. So alumite tool rod, tough tool rod. Two large alumite plates, an alumite tough rod, and the bronze hammer head. There is definitely other options on materials you can use. I think in the first season we went for full steel. Most importantly though, how fast is this thing? Oh, that's not bad at all. That's awesome. <laughs> I also shouldn't have made this big hole here, but I think we're going to be expanding this way anyway. We also did manage to get the tanned leather, which means we can craft two backpacks. Nice, this is actually a decent amount of storage per backpack, and we have two of them, of course. And if I'm not wrong, we can actually use dye on them. I really want to dye them orange, yes. Not that it's much different from the default. Actually, maybe we keep one default to differentiate between the two. Anyways, let's return to the main problem today, the food situation. Our goal is to get the healing axe. First of all though, why do we want the healing axe? 
Well, just by holding this thing in our main hand, we do slowly replenish our hunger, and it basically completely removes the need to eat frequently. All we have to make sure to do is switch this into our main hand every so often. So yeah, this healing axe is extremely powerful and should save us time in the long run. However, this thing is expensive. We need to gather every single Pam's Harvest Craft Garden, two stacks of firm and silken tofu, and on top of that, we need 20 delighted meals, hearty breakfasts, rainbow curries, supreme pizzas, sausage and bread, and beef wellington. And all of them are not exactly easy to craft either. So yeah, we've got some cooking and farming to do here. You know, I'm starting to realise this game is just all about how you manage your time. And we're spending more time mining coal. We do still have quite a long ways to go before we can get the healing axe, and I want to make sure that we're efficient with our time usage. Not that we've been particularly efficient up until this point in the playthrough. But you know, now that we have blast furnaces, I think it's important that we keep those going. And I think actually at this point in the game, coal is easier to get than charcoal, since we don't have an automated source of wood. Oh man, this hammer is so nice. <laughs> I love it, it's so awesome. Oh, and there's a salts vein next to this as well. I guess we'd already discovered it on the map, but we are actually gonna need salts as part of this healing axe. Gotta make sure our food is seasoned, right? But yeah, I think four stacks of coal should be more than enough. And in fact, now that we have the forge hammer, we can just double this into two gems. If this zombie is gonna let us out, you see him up, is that a zombie? I think it is, right? That is a disaster waiting to happen. I'm not going up there. I think I seen a cave exit here. Maybe we can take this. I can hear a spider here. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, we got him. Okay, the coast seems to be clear here. Let's make a run for it. Yeah, the Forge Hammer start to process all this coal. We also have four loot bags from Quest Rewards. That was a terrible, terrible... Well, I guess besides the hammer, but this is no different to Diamond. So I've also been working on expanding out our farms over here. As you saw, we're gonna need a lot of different varieties of food. However, just before I started work on the farms, I realised we had enough material to craft another blast furnace. I think I left it here in the work tables, right? Yeah. We could have actually crafted it last episode, we were only short a few stone dust. And actually, this time around, we don't need as many bricks, since we can actually wall share a whole slice of this. So effectively, the left side wall on this blast furnace here can share with the right hand side of this one. Once we place down the controller here, it should form the multi-block, which it does, perfect. Apparently, it's also more efficient if we use blocks of coal or blocks of coal coke. I'm going to put a few stacks in the compressor right now so that we can get the blast furnaces going. And the other few stacks we're going to throw through the coke oven, which should give us coal coke. A much longer lasting fuel than just regular coal. Oh, this one I guess is full of creosote oil. You know what, I'm just going to break this. We get enough creosote oil. <laughs> Oops, that's fire bricks. Okay, now that we're a bit more organised, it's time to make a sprint for the healing axe. And it's about time as well, because we can just about no longer sprint with how hungry we are here. And actually a very easy win here is we can pick up the leafy and I think we're missing one more berry garden, which is already here. We are still missing textile, which I realised we don't have planted here, I must have broke the last one. But these gardens are not really important, we'll come back to those later. The most important thing is we figure out what we need to plant, and there's a lot of different stuff here. There is actually quite a few quests under the fish and farm and cooking tab. And it includes things like the hearty breakfast, which can actually help us out. We can also make use of some of these coins here. I believe it's the farmer coin. I remember there was some sort of sapling that we needed here, which is sold here. Is it this one? No, this is vanilla ones. Oh, it's this one here, the maple sapling, that's right. We need some like maple syrup for pancakes or something. And the only way you can get this tree is basically to buy it. I was searching for this thing for hours in season one, but it looks like the, the quest is locked. I don't think this is going to be too terribly interesting, so let me do some grinding here. <laughs> So this very long process started off by just going through the crops that we already had, taking a stock of our inventory, so to say. I picked out the ones that were relevant for the healing axe and gave them their own dedicated new 3x3 plot. 
It was a lot of tedious comparison work, but actually I really enjoyed myself here. I encourage you guys to do this as well if you if you uh, are looking for a farming experience. <laughs> Anyways, I made sure that the blast furnace was kept going, and once we had taken a stock of our materials, it was time to head out on an adventure. But there is two upgrades I would like to make before we go. The first one requires us to have the steam extractor, which we should just be able to sit down on the end here, eventually this will get its own position. But we just need to be able to extract sticky resin, maybe. Oh no, it is actually working here, it's just a bit delayed, 30 seconds per recipe. I think we also need a bronze screw a pair of leather boots, as we want to craft the piston boots. We also do need two more pistons, which we have here. Oh yeah, and we did manage to get cow trophies here from using the butcher and knife, but I think we have some leather dried out outside here, yeah. Hopefully we have some rubber in here, raw rubber dust. How do we turn this into rubber? Ah, that's right, it's with sulfur. Yeah, sulfur is not something that we have right now, and sulfur only comes from the nether. Okay, the piston boots are going to have to wait a little bit. But now that we should have some more steel, we should be able to get a hang glider. I think all we're missing for this is a few steel screws. So we need to craft two glider wings. And can we craft it? Yes, perfect. And check this out. <laughs> this is going to dramatically speed up the rate at which we can traverse the world. It would be nice with the piston boots since that also gives us extended jump height. And combining that with the glider especially would be really, really awesome. But we are going to have to wait on that, as the quest book points out here. We do need to visit the nether for sulfur. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. We need to plant some young onions here. And now I'm pretty sure we have everything planted. A little bit later in the video, I'm going to put together a full list of everything you need to plant. I want to make it easy for you guys who also want to go for this healing axe. I'm just not exactly sure if we've got everything right now, so I want to wait and, and make sure that is the case. Right now though, I want to focus on, I think it was the rainbow curry. Yes, this one here. We need to gather lavender, grass, poppies, dandelions, blue orchids, and then also the missing garden. So the water garden, the nether garden, the textile, and the leafy. Oh man, finally we came across these lavenders. I've been searching for this for hours by now. <laughs> I mean, at least once you find them, you're never ever going to run out of these things. Look at this. The lavender is only a small win at this point. We did manage to pick up some other things, but yeah, still lots and lots to find for this healing axe. But yeah, look, look at this. Look at the amount of chunks we've generated already. Alright, alright, I think by this point we've gathered basically everything besides three items. And oh my goodness, this took a while. <laughs> I forgot how just how much farming this is. Everything just grows so slowly here, I don't know why. Yeah, tomatoes, we need more of those. So in terms of the items we're missing, we're short four blue orchids, but we should be able to bone meal those. We are missing rice, we don't have any rice planted. And we're also missing burning blossoms. Those three things we, we have absolutely zero of. The rest we should have planted here. And we're waiting on quite a lot of this growing still, but yeah, there's a few items I want to help you guys out with. One of those being the coconut. The coconut you can find on trees in mainly tropical areas. I think I found them down by the hot river, but you can also get them in the fungi forest, which is quite near our base. I managed to get the maple sapling quest to unlock, which means we can grow maple wood. I have a few of these grown here. But yeah, you remember that extractor we got, which apparently is out of steam? Well, we can use that to extract the maple wood into maple syrup. And we can craft the syrup with the spruce saplings, we don't have to go through the quest again. But we need at least 20 maple syrup for the for the foods we need. Something else worth mentioning, I think, is that you need a lot of soybeans. And so we have the soybeans down here, I just added those a second ago. And we also have another large field up here next to the wheat. I may actually remove the wheat by this point. Since we don't need any more, we have the 60 pieces of toast that we need. And I've started to fill some chests down here. Yeah, there's 40 toast there, plus 20 more to make burgers which is in here. So this chest here is for the delighted meal. 
I think for this we're waiting on lettuce and tomato. And we're also waiting on cheese, which can be made, I think, from milk. And you can use soy milk. And there's quite a few instances of that. I think you can use the soy milk for the pizza as well. And you can use soy milk for the hearty breakfast. Instead of fried egg, I believe you can use tofu, yeah. Which is a bit weird, I don't know why tofu turns into a fried egg, but there you go. <laughs> All of these other trees you can see, by the way, are just fruits that I happen to pick up, like avocado. And if you guys remember, the more variety of food we eat, the more hearts we gain. We are currently on five extra hearts, and this is a chest full of everything we haven't eaten yet. I am also curious if the water gardens have spread yet. This is where we get the rice from. And I also picked these up in the Hot River. But I think they mostly spawn in swampy areas, so if you stick to the swamps, you should eventually find the water garden. And similar to all of the land variants, they do spread on their own when you plant them in water. And they have a, a chance to drop the rice that we're after. But I want to wait for them to spread because we only have a limited number of those. And if you break them with left click, you don't get the water garden back. And of course, we need the water garden as part of the gardens. We have all the rest of them except the nether. Some of you guys may be asking, three, why didn't you just automate everything? Well, this is New Horizons after all, and we've not generated any electricity yet. And unless we go with Thumbcraft or something similar, which we've not unlocked yet, and we don't have the ability to unlock just yet, we are gonna need some form of electricity to automate any crops of any kind. Plus, the quantity is not really the issue here. I mean, it is at this very moment, because we're waiting on crops grown here. But the hardest part of this is gathering all the variety of things you need. Also, these animals are so loud. Every time I pass by, I can't hear myself think. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we're going to start to consume all these foods we haven't eaten yet. We've got a lot of smoothies here to consume. Not a big fan of smoothies, personally. But they do give us extra hearts, so we'll, we'll consume them. We also just picked up two stacks of soybeans, which should be enough to get our firm tofu. And I'm using the work table for this. This is really, really helpful for this. We can craft fresh water, which is basically a water bucket which stacks. And then I think it's two fresh water plus a soybean. Yeah, this gives us wet tofu. We're going to have to fill the buckets quite a few times here. This is also a good way to make the dough for bread. And after oh so many clicks, we have two stacks of wet tofu. And then we just need to grab one of our soft mallets here. It's going to take probably a few of these things. And this turns into firm tofu. Oh, we're going to need a lot of soft mallets for this. Two stacks of firm tofu we can hand in for the quest. I believe it does consume it as well. So yeah, it does take it off of us. We still need two stacks of silken tofu which is the same process except you roll it down. So we need another four stacks of soy plus whatever we need for the milk, etc. You know, I also haven't checked our steel supplies in a little while. Six, that's not great. Plus 41. Okay, 41 is really good. We also get these tiny pile of ashes as a byproduct, which actually stops the blast furnace. Uh, it prevents it from running, so we do actually need to take this out every now and then. And as far as I'm aware, these specific blast furnaces cannot be automated, so we're stuck to manual processing for these ones. Again, until we get some electricity, which is basically our next major milestone after the healing axe. Oh, you know what? I just found a bone, actually, we, which we can turn into bone meal. Bone meal is not so easy to get in this, I don't think. And we should be able to grab the extra blue orchids that we're missing. We're missing four, and I've been out, like, twice more to find more of these things, and I don't remember where I got them. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Anyways, let's move on with the other things we are missing. The nether garden and the burning blossoms, both of which are obtained in the nether. And in my infinite wisdom, I ended up pulverizing all the obsidian we had into dust. That probably wasn't a smart move. So the nether in this pack is very unforgiving, and I think it's our best bet just to expect that we'll die. We are going to need a flint and steel, of course, which in this pack is made with steel. I think it's just like this, right? No, of course not. Oh yeah, oh yeah, lovely. <laughs> what a recipe this is. Small gear. Yeah, this is two, two rods and a plate. I think our file broke as well. We need to make another file. We'll make from steel. Oh wow, this looks so ugly, but it has to be done. Sometimes you can get some nasties following us in the nether, and we definitely don't want that. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Please give us a good spawn. And I forgot it takes multiple attempts to light this thing. There we go. I'm nervous. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with this. Not too bad. We're in a very, very secluded spot up here. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. And we spawn next to some burning blossoms. This is exactly what we need. Oh yeah, I forgot that happens. And we also want a safety box on this side. Hello there, ghast. That's definitely not a vanilla ghast either. We're not going to mess with them because some of the ghasts here are very, very strong. So having access to the nether also gives us access to very unique ores here as well. Things like nether quartz, things like tetrahedrate, which is extra copper. It can actually give us increased yield. Of course, we have the usual things like glowstone. I think I'll leave that there, actually. Our inventory is very, very full right now. 
yeah, nether mining is actually very worthwhile if you can avoid the pigmen, because mining nether ores does annoy them. And we have to just be extremely careful here. I want it. Oh, there's a nether garden. Oh, nice. We should be able to grow this back at our base. So even if we don't get all eight here, we should be able to get more. There's a Thomcraft Wisp down there. Those are very deadly. I think I see some more gardens down there, though. I'm going to take a chance. Yeah, ghasts, wisps, wolves, and I think the fire bats are the biggest danger here. Speaking of the fire bats. Ah, looks like we got a nether quartz vein down there. Visual prospecting, I believe, also works in the nether. Emerald? I don't remember. I think that's mixed in with uranium, though. One more nether garden. Oh, there's one of those wolves in the distance. You see him? There is a few more gardens down here. I think we're just going to pick up what we need and leave. I'm not really up for overstaying my welcome here. I am very happy we got a good spawn here, though. Definitely better than season one. Oh, there's a wisp. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Those specific pigmen, I think, can only be damaged with a wooden sword. It's something crazy like that, but there is also some bone segments here, which means we should be able to get bone meal. Okay, here is the final nether garden. Yeah, and I think we're just short 18 burning blossoms. Hello, wolf. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> uh, I knew that was going to happen. I don't know if I got that on camera there, but... I was punching a bunch of burning blossoms, so the HP was low. And yeah, he got me in one shot. Oh, great. How are we supposed to get down there without the hang glider? And there's nitro creepers. This was going so well, and then one wrong move. We are going to need a pickaxe, I think, at least. Okay, I forgot how long these things take to break, but I think we're safe. I think we're good to go. Inventory is a mess. Oh no. I mean, we did expect this to happen, right? All right, Farmer 3 is back in his natural habitat. We made it out of the nether. <laughs> it's been about one and a half hours. I've been doing lots and lots of preparations here. I think we have the healing axe here. So during the time we spent in the nether, the water gardens had actually spread, and breaking one of those gave us one piece of rice. I was also able to pulverize those bone structures we found using our macerator to give us bone meal, and I ended up replacing the wheat with rice, and used the bone meal to give us enough for the quest. I also used the excess bone meal on crops like bell pepper, which we didn't quite have enough of. A good amount of the soy crop had also grown, which means we could make more tofu. And this time, instead of just making firm tofu, we could process it once again with the rolling pin to make silken tofu. And that, along with the eight nether gardens we picked up in the nether, we can turn in for the quest. Which basically just means we need all of the meals plus the water gardens. We do have six water gardens in our backpack, and I think we have the rest down here by the river. Seven, eight, nine. I think we only need eight. We'll keep the ninth one there, which we can turn in for the quest. Perfect. Yeah, so that leaves us with all the meals. So let's maybe start with the hearty breakfast. This is probably the most intricate one after the rainbow curry. Onions, butter, potato gives us potato cakes. Also a quest. And then firm tofu plus fried eggs plus potato cakes plus toast plus juice gives us the hearty breakfast. And I guess we use cranberry juice plus grape juice. We didn't have enough cranberry. And we can turn these in for the healing axe. All right, that's one down, five to go. Next up, let's do the sausage and bread, which means we're gonna need ketchup, we need tomatoes. And I think we just craft with the soft mallet to get ketchup. Uh-huh, and I think this is the one where the maple syrup comes in. Yeah, we also need onions and bread. I don't know if we have any more spare bread. I might have to make up some more of that, actually, but we do have onions for sure. Did I leave bread in these chests? I don't think I did. Man, I thought I was prepared. <laughs> There's always something we're missing. And in fact, I don't even think we have dough for the bread. You know what? Even though we've been through this before, I think we're way slower the second time around. And I'm not really sure why exactly. It feels a lot more grindy this time around, but I think it's worth it. Uh, honestly, I do think it's worth it. And bravo to any of you guys who also try this. It is a mission early game, especially. Yeah, I think last ingredient is spice leaf, which we have grown here. We have plenty of this. So spice leaf plus minced meat plus maple syrup should give us maple sausage. And then combine that with the bread, the ketchup and the onion, we get sausage and bread. It would be really ideal to craft an extra one for the extra heart, but I'm not going to stress over that. We can do that later on. Let's submit this for the quest. Four to go. 
Actually, you know what? We can get a little bit more. I found some more extra maple syrup in the extractor. We got an extra maple sausage and sausage and bread. Maybe we saved those though. We'll keep them in the backpack. Even with the healing axe, sometimes you need some extra boost in saturation. All right, next food is gonna be the delighted meal. We need to make some cheese. And we did already make some burgers earlier on. We can make these into cheeseburgers. Yes, very good. Some of you may know that I really dislike cheese. That's my hot take of the day. <laughs> it's not really my thing. Anyways, we need to make this into the deluxe cheeseburger. We need lettuce and tomato. We do have some lettuce here. I think we do have some extra tomato, which we do. There you go, the deluxe cheeseburger. And to make it a meal, we combine with fries and a smoothie. Yeah, the extra smoothies we have in here. Didn't have enough of all the same kind, so we're going to make different meals for everyone. <laughs> some with a raspberry, some with a blueberry. And there's 20 for the quest. Awesome. Three to go. So some of you that are very attentive may have noticed that we got 64 salt as a quest reward last episode. We did already run through all of that and we are kind of out of salt for this pizza. I didn't mine any salt earlier on. Although all of this is rock salt. All of this pink one is rock salt. This is lipidolite. I think there should be regular salt mixed in here. There's small ores, but yeah, I guess the secondary is listed as salt ore. The sporadic is spodumene, which is a completely different thing. The salt ore must be a bit lower, I think. Ah, yeah, there we go. Alright, after collecting some more salt, I was able to craft some more cheese. Combining with dough, mincemeat and tomato, we can get our pizzas. That is 17, we need 20. I think we can use tofu as the other one. Yeah, so one is vegetarian, I suppose. What's this thing? Chicken parmesan. I guess we use, I guess we can eat this for the hearts. Sure. But it's not just regular pizza we need, we need supreme pizza. And to do that, we can combine with onion, bell pepper and spice leaf. Turn this in for the quest, and that leaves two to go, rainbow curry and beef wellington. Beef wellington is probably the easiest one, it's just tofu, dough, spinach and mushroom. Please tell me we have spinach here. Oh we do, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> I did remember to plant this. There's just so many crops going through my head right now. And there we go, 20 beef wellingtons. 22 beef wellingtons. Alright, let's hand this in for the quest, and we've got the most tricky one to go, the rainbow curry. Uh, I guess we start with the curry rice. Oh no you don't. Look at this guy. He's gonna follow us all the way in here. Actually, this is a bad idea. Someone's gotten themselves stuck down there. No, he's gonna find a way. He's gonna, <laughs> he's totally gonna creep up on us here. Oh, a skeleton as well. So earlier on, I mentioned that I was gonna put together a full list of all the crops you needed to grow. I hope that crafting all of this does actually help you, but the spreadsheet that's linked in every single episode should contain a list of all the crops you need. Again, the most important ones is to get the coconut early on, lots and lots of soybeans. Collect the gardens as early as you possibly can. And then it's just into the nether for the, the burning blossoms and the nether gardens. All right, I think we can get our curried rice here. Uh, spice leaf, we're missing spice leaf. Awesome, that should be about 22 curry rice. And all we need now is those four blue orchids. I think we should have everything else here, but we are short four. I may honestly go back and check the video on the coordinates because it should be listed on the map on the right. I really don't remember where that was. And it must have been hundreds or maybe even thousands of blocks away. Look at all this. I believe it's to the north somewhere. I'm also not exactly sure how this video is going to turn out. I think it's going to be one of the most unique ones in this playthrough. We're not going to have many more episodes like this. It's basically going to be tech and magic from now on. Although I still do want to get the kitchen at some point, because getting the extra hearts is very useful. The kitchen materials though, as you can imagine, are not default recipes, so I wanted to wait for more technology before doing that. I don't really think it would help us that much. It just makes things slightly easier to craft once you have the materials, but that really isn't the tricky part here. One of the advantages to running around like this is we found so much aluminium gravel. I think we're almost at like two stacks of this stuff. Not even accounting for the alumite we made. Oh, there's some more. Awesome. I would also like to take this moment at the end of the video here to just thank everyone for all of your support. Like, there's been so many of you new to the channel here. It's crazy. Like, I don't normally keep a keep an eye on the numbers too frequently. It's normally people pointing it out to me, like, we've re just reached 30,000, which is absolutely insane. <laughs> In fact, I think it's at like 32,500 or something as I'm filming this. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I've stated before, I don't do this for numbers, obviously, but, you know, the more of you along for the ride, the better, because we're going to need a lot of help to get to the end of this pack. <laughs> or at least to tier 7, which is what we're going to, which is our initial goal here. We'll see where we stand once we reach there. Oh, and it's a Blood Moon. Oh, Blood Moon is not good. We can't sleep the night. And there's extra infernal mobs. Okay, we're gonna log out. Aha! We found them! 
Oh man, it's been like an extra 20 minutes. I'm sure that I'm missing something to get these. I could have sworn that bone meal works. Maybe that's only in newer versions of Minecraft though. I guess bone meal doesn't work. And yes, there is a recipe with Batania, which is new in this pack. We have to definitely check out Batania, but we need the alchemy catalyst and this needs Stormcraft. All right, so we have returned and out on our quest, we did actually manage to find some papaya, which we can turn into a sapling. One more fruit to add to our collection, I guess. However, most importantly, look at this. We got everything for the curried rice. No, rainbow curry is what we're trying to make here. So we got the skillet, we got grass, we got burning blossoms, we got curry rice, we got blue orchids, we got bowls, we got lavender, and we got dandelions and poppies. Unfortunately, we're actually short a blue orchid to make an extra one, but as long as we get 20 for the quest here. Hunger no more. The second time around. All right, let's claim this healing axe, finally. <laughs> oh my goodness, finally, we have it. And look at that, our hunger is restoring automatically. Oh, this is awesome. And we can replace our hatchet, actually. I guess we don't really need to use this anymore. It's a kind of slow axe. Actually, it's not too bad. It might be faster than our hatchet at this point. But we are going to be investing in the lumber axe pretty soon because we are going to need a lot of wood. Yeah, I mean, it's really not too bad as, a, as an axe on its own. Most importantly, though, we don't need to ever carry any more food. And that is a success. I see that guy over there. He's not the first guy to show up this episode. There's been a few more that I've cut out, actually. I had a few close calls running back and forward here. We've still got a lot of development in this area, uh, but I was kind of beelining this axe and the blast furnaces. Now that we have both of these things, though, we can continue with progression, which is exactly the route we're going to take next episode. So, you know, it might feel like slow progress today, but it's uh, one step at a time with this pack. So, yeah, I think that is also a good point to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end. And thank you again for all your support on the channel recently. It's been awesome. So yeah, with that, I hope to see you in the next episode of Greg Tech New Horizons. We're not hungry anymore. <laughs>